Hey, this is Melissa. Today I am here with you to sew a pillowcase. I am gonna be sewing a Christmas pillowcase um, with some cute little Christmas fabrics, but of course this project is not only reserved for Christmas. You can do something for any holiday or any regular day because we all need pillowcases. This is a really easy project, a great project for kids or beginners. If you have somebody who's interested into getting into sewing and wants to sew something for themselves, this is really a great project. We're gonna do the burrito method, um, which is something that's been out for a long time. You may have seen other videos about it, but that's what we're gonna do today. Makes a really nice pillowcase. We're also gonna do some French seams. I have a sample of a small pillow here where I've made the pillowcase for it. Um, what you're gonna need, and there's a blog post that's gonna tell you exactly what you need, but you need fabric for the body of the pillow, for the cuff of the pillow, and then there's a trim piece that goes in between that is optional. You can do that or not, but you do need your other two main fabric pieces. Um, there's a chart, of course, that tells you what you need to, um, you know, the sizes of fabric that you need, and whatever size you choose, the technique is gonna be exactly the same. You'll just cut your fabric to those sizes and then get started with me. Um, the fabric I'm using today, I just wanted to tell you one little thing. Um, I am using for my trim strip, this fabric like this, that is actually printed on the bias. So it might look to you as I go through the video that I have cut this strip on the bias, but actually I didn't, it's on the straight grain. So um, that's just one way to use a cute little fabric for the trim, but I wanted to let you know about that. Also, let's talk about directional fabric. You know, whenever you have a pillow on your bed, it is probably sitting in this direction. Um, and if you bought, um, if you have non-directional fabric, this does not matter at all. But if you happen to have fabric that has a direction, you would probably want your design to go like this while sitting on the bed rather than like this. So if you made the pillow with the instructions for the non-directional fabric, your directional fabric would look this way. So you need to take care to cut your fabric a different way so that it will sit this direction on your pillow. Um, to do that, you're gonna need extra yardage um, and cause you'll have to cut your um, fabric in the different direction. So um, that chart is also on here on the blog post. So you're either gonna have non-directional or directional fabric for your body. And you just need to know which one you have so you know how much fabric you need and how to cut it out. Um, there are lots of different sizes of pillows. The pillow I'm gonna make today is just a standard queen size pillow. Um, actually, there are <clears throat> three different sizes of pillows that are probably the most popular. There's a standard, there is a standard queen, and then there's a queen. Also, there's king, and then I've also got this little travel kid size pillow I'm gonna give you instructions for. But those first three that I gave you, pretty much you can use the same size pillowcase for any of them. So our pillowcase is gonna be 30 inches by 20 inches. That's how it's gonna end up. Um, so, but just go to, like I said before, just go to the chart and see what size it is you're making and cut that out and that will be fine. One more little thing to say about this small pillow. It's a great size for kids. Also great size for gift giving. If you happen to have anybody who was gonna be in the hospital and needed some little extra propping up of arms or anything, or just some little comforts of home, this is a great, great little gift. Um, <clears throat> also, this size pillow you can get at Walmart or Amazon, but it's a 14 by 20 pillow. Um, anyway, so go ahead and decide what size you're gonna make and get everything together and come back and we will get started. So now that you have all your fabrics together, we'll get started. First thing you need to do is get that two inch strip, your trim piece, go to the iron and iron it lengthwise. Iron it in half so that you have one long edge across the top, the raw edge, and then this is the folded edge here. So first thing to do is to iron that in that way. After you have that iron, we'll set it to the side. Remember I said that this piece is totally optional, so you may not even need that piece, but the next thing you're gonna need to do is lay out your, your cuff fabric, which is the one that's gonna go on the end, lay it down with right sides up. Now my fabric is gingham, so it doesn't really have a right or a wrong side, but be sure if you're doing it that your right side is up. Then the next thing you do is get out your main body fabric. Now I have this all the way opened up. I didn't tell you, this is called the, some people call it the burrito method, some people call it the taco method. So whichever form of, um, of, of that food that you wanna use as your method, you can. Um, but anyway, we are gonna lay the um, body fabric right side up on top of the cuff fabric and line it up. 
and they should match up all the way at the top, your raw edge at the top. After you've done that, get your little trim piece here and put it across the top as well. All three pieces should be the same length. So what I have here is my cuff fabric on the bottom, then the body fabric here, and then I have the little trim piece. And the raw edge of the trim piece is up here at the top. So after you have that lined up, take your pins and let's pin them all the way down. So I'm gonna just pin, pin, pin all the way, making sure that that raw edge is even all the way across. So these edges are all pinned together, layered and pinned together. And now we're just gonna keep it all laid out flat, got the entire thing laid out flat, and I'm gonna take this opposite end and I'm going to begin to roll it. I'm gonna roll it, roll it, roll it. This is where the burrito comes in, but I am rolling the whole thing up. And I'm gonna roll it all the way up until you see my cuff fabric is starting to show. And now that I've got it about halfway up there and I have this, now I'm gonna take my cuff fabric and roll it over. So this is creating what we're calling the burrito. So now that I have this, you know, I've got my main fabric all rolled up inside here. You can still see my trim fabric. And now I'm gonna line up the raw edge across here and I'm gonna readjust my pins to where I have all of my layers together. So I had some pins in already. I'm just taking them out and um, lining up that new piece so that all of these raw edges are together. So you're gonna have one layer of your main body fabric, two layers of cuff, and two layers of trim all in here. So go ahead and pin all that together and then we will go to the next thing. Okay, we have everything pinned, everything's rolled up inside and pinned. And I've got this long edge right here that needs to be stitched on the sewing machine. Um, my trim piece that's inside there is one inch folded. So if I were to sew a half inch seam allowance, that would give me a half inch strip that was exposed on the pillow edge. Um, or if you wanted to do a quarter inch seam allowance, you would end up with three quarters of an inch of trim. So either one is fine. Um, this one here is three quarters of an inch, but you may like narrower. I'm actually gonna do a half of an inch on that. The only difference that it makes is that it makes your pillow, if you do the um, if you do the three quarter inch trim, which is a quarter of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna have a little bit longer pillow, like half an inch longer, but that's no big deal. Um, so I'm gonna go on and do that, stitch all the way across with either quarter or half inch seam allowance, and then come back. Everything's sewn together. Now we are ready to turn it um, out. So I am just gonna start pulling this fabric that's rolled up to the outside. Okay, about to have it all out here. You can see how it's gonna look. Then you can also see that I need to take it and iron it, but it's gonna be pretty cute. Um, so what you need to do now, go in and get it all completely rolled out and then go to the iron and press everything. Press all of this really nice. Um, your, your trim strip is gonna go away towards the, um, it's gonna go towards the body away from the cuff and you can press it. Now, some people, if you want to, you can do some top stitching along here if you would like. I've seen some people do, would do it right on the edge of the cuff. You could also do it on the trim. Either way, that's fine. This is another time where if you wanted to embroider a name on it somewhere, you could go on and do that. Um, if you haven't already done that at the beginning, or you don't have to do that at all. So go on and press, and then we will come back and get to the side seams. So it's all pressed, look how great that looks. Looks really nice. We are ready now to sew these side seams. We're gonna do a French seam on this, which means that it's gonna be a really nice finish. We're gonna have to sew it twice, but that encloses the seam allowance inside. Um, another seam allowance is a really pretty, nice finish for a pillowcase, so that's what we're gonna do. First thing you need to do is um, 
Get everything folded together in half like this, lining up your raw edges, and then you're gonna pin all the way across this long side seam and all the way down the bottom. Be very careful as you're pinning this area here that you get these pieces in this area matched up really nicely so that it will kind of look like look rather seamless um, along here as you sew this edge. So you're gonna sew all the way along here, all the way down to the corner, and then you're going to put your needle down and pivot when you get to the corner and finish the end. All of this with a one quarter inch seam allowance and remember that your wrong sides are together. So it's all stitched with a quarter of an inch seam allowance all along here and down to the corner. The next thing you need to do is get some scissors out and you're gonna trim away half of this seam allowance. That means it's gonna take it down to about an eighth of an inch and um, we're gonna trim it. Some people would just turn it and sew it again with a wider seam allowance, but I found that if you don't trim it, you end up with these little pieces that kind of stick out from time to time. So it's nice if you can start the next step of the French seam um, with a nice clean cut edge. So we're gonna cut away half of the seam allowance, about an eighth of an inch. And then also down at the corner, you need to trim across so that um, <clears throat> there's a diagonal right at the corner. I've actually already got this one trimmed and you can even see there's still some even um, sticking up, but it's sure, um, <clears throat> you sure need to trim all of those off in about half of the seam allowance. So go on and trim all of those off. And then after you've done that, turn it inside out, or I guess it would be, yeah, <clears throat> it would be outside in and um, press everything really well have everything pressed now, and I haven't sewn the last stitch yet, but with the pressing, I have got that seam just right there on my fold for the pressing. So be sure that it's right there in the center of your fold. This little area right here is gonna be a little bit bulky because you have a lot of layers in there. Press that as flat as you can. Um, and then also, I didn't say, but I did use a little point turner to point my, my corners up a little bit so that I wouldn't have a lot of bulk in the corner right there. So um, you have everything all the way pressed. And now the last step is to sew all the way around again, these two sides with a pivot in the middle. We're gonna do a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance only because we need that to get around this spot right here. So 3 8 of an inch all the way down one side, pivot and down the end. Gonna back stitch at, at both the beginning and the end. And once that's done, you can turn it right side out and press it and it will be all finished. So it's all finished up. Looks really great on the pillow. You can see right here, it's a nice fit on my big pillow. And we have these really nice um, enclosed French seams on the inside. Um, so it should be good to go, ready to use. Um, hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. I think it was really fun. Hope you'll make lots of pillowcases and happy sewing.